Hello and welcome to everybody today. Thank you for attending our Dev Talk today. Uh, we're just going to give it just a minute or two as people are jumping on, and then I'll let uh, Mr. James Winton Land, our DevRel lead, introduce our guest speaker and presentation. Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone, depending on where you're tuning in from. Welcome and thanks for joining us today. Uh, so we'll be discussing Secure Storage Manager today, uh, which is one of our approaches to managing the scope storage restrictions, which have been enforced in Android 11 and later now. In order to uh, present this, we have one of our expert engineers with us today, Thurindu, uh, who's actually worked on developing this solution, so you couldn't be in better hands. So without further ado, Thurindu, uh, the stage is yours. Please take it away. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, James. Uh, good morning, good evening, um, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining uh, today. Um, so that, uh, today I'm going to present about um, uh, what Storage Manager um, has introduced um, in order to uh, uh, avoid the scope storage restrictions and um, sharing files and uh, data among applications uh, in Zebra devices. Uh, as a, a kickstart, so uh, previously we uh, uh, the SSM storage manager being there in Android 11 um, Zebra devices. And, uh, this is meant to be like securely sharing sensitive data initially, and now it will comes with the file sharing as well and uh, it can be uh, shared uh, shared data among applications or share files as well and uh, it has uh, it is uh, based on the content provider uh, provider interfaces uh, uh, provided by android and uh, uh, main features of uh, Secure storage manages that you can share or store the data inside uh, Secure storage manager in the persistent form or non persistent form. So, when uh, file or data being shared, uh, as those will be preserved and can accessible after, even after enterprise reset uh, happens. Moving on. So, how uh, can SSM be used for data sharing and persistence? Um, sensitive application data can be stored and can be used to store and uh, share small data items uh, by an application to be consumed by itself or uh, another application so typically mentioned here the small uh, small portions of data uh, the of a single record can be uh, up to 10 kb but if the application requires more uh, uh, data to be shared in a single entry uh, we recommend it to chunk it out and store it in uh, separate uh, records and um, retrieve it back uh, they can concatenate the data and uh, use it and store data securely by encrypt in encrypted format uh, you don't have to worry about the uh, uh, exposing the data even if uh, the uh, device being uh, uh, the the contents being uh, reached to a wrong uh, wrong hands uh, the data will be encrypted so that nobody uh, can um, uh, see the actual content there and uh, ssm provides content provider interfaces to store and uh, retrieve the data um, this is a standard uh, sh uh, sharing uh, data uh, between applications and who can use uh, SSM? Um, uh, so we can think of different uh, use cases like EMM clients can store data for applications to consume after they, they are installed, or any application can store data to be consumed by itself after enterprise reset. Uh, for example, if your application is configured um, with a specific set of configuration, and in the event of enterprise reset, if you want, uh, your application to start from the same as what it was previously the the data can be stored in uh, and then retrieve that 
back once your application gets installed. Any application can securely share data to another application. Um, the security is the main uh, objective of Secure Storage Manager. Um, that even application um, stores some data uh, on behalf of another application. The same application, uh, the the no other application can retrieve that data. Uh, SSM will take care of the the person who queries for that data as well as uh, e even go beyond that and checks for the uh, signature application as well. So uh, we are uh, mainly focusing on um, these ex, uh, concepts like application can stores on behalf of another application and application can stores data be consumed by itself after enterprise reset. So those are the main use cases but you can use the uh, SSM as you wish uh, based on your uh, uh, use cases or requirements. Okay, so um, as uh, to start off developing an uh, application which uses to uh, stores data, queries the data uh, from SSM, uh, we have introduced two um, permissions. Uh, these are must to be included in um, Android manifest file. And if you are targeting for SDK 30 or above uh, when you are um, compiling it, uh, Queries um, tag is is also required uh, for um, the application visibility um, restrictions. Uh, yeah, uh, Android in A11. So authority URL for sharing data. So this is the may uh, the the tunnel between the uh, the the application and the uh, secure storage manager where. Uh, using the content provider, this is the URL that you need to uh, be used um, in your application. So uh, I'll uh, quickly go through this and I'll do a demonstration um, with two applications how it works. So th this is standard uh, way of uh, using the content provider where uh, you can create a set of uh, content values and there are predefined set of uh, content values uh, in SSM. For example, a data name uh, is um, defining the what is the it's like a key of the data and the data of the data. And data input form is um, it can be either encrypted um, data or plain text. And output form can also be a plain text. Um, as well. So the data persisted required is um, uh, mainly to set whether the data need to be persisted, uh, persistently stored or non-persistently stored. And delete required is a special feature that file is uh, the data being um, uh, queried by the application. The data will automatically be deleted by SSM. So that uh, the data, uh, once it is, uh, it's like one-time uh, information that uh, can be shared. It's it's up to the application developer how to use it, but um, uh, additional feature that we have uh, uh, exposed. So once uh, the content value is being um, set, uh, we can um, call the get get content resolver from the context and then insert insert. Uh, and values. So once the values are inserted, the 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 target application or the consuming application can query the data like this, and it uses the query um, interface where we can have a selection criteria where the column uh, column data name is the the data name that we referred before, and user info is the uh, the key that we are um, querying for and whether the data persistent required true or false based on uh, SSM will re re return back the data. Okay, so I'll do a small demonstration with this.
I'm starting up the vice just you know. Uh, okay, now uh, this application is uh, the um, saves the data for uh, the other application. So here uh, I'm inserting my name and a password. So and I create the data. So once uh, this is done. Uh, if I uh, the same application can query the data because because the it's the application still um, which inserted the data so that uh, application until the other application retrieves it can um, uh, update so change the data or even delete the data so I will delete the user for the moment and I can get the user again there is no no records found now I'll create the user again and if I go back and launch the client application, and if I query the data, I will get the same data. And from this, which is the owner of the application, uh, owner of the data now, and can delete the data. And if we uh, try to retrieve after the deleting the data, the data won't be available. So that is. Um, one thing this this feature being there for like uh, now two two or three uh, eleven, uh, 11 Android eleven um, which we had. Um, so I'm moving on. So uh, just for the source code also. So in this manifest we have used the permission for uh, permissions and this is the client uh, application that we have used and oh, sorry uh, so th this is the mm client or the uh, the the one who inserted the data so this is the code that we can uh, use to um, insert a, insert the data and in this um, we have inserting a uh, uh, data value as a, a formatted uh, json string uh, from the text fields we have taken but all these other information are passed as the content values like data type whether it is plain text or encrypted da uh, data uh, we have used uh, plain text here and user info is the uh, data uh, uh, and the data input form is the uh, uh, plain text and output form is the uh, and the persistent required this um, is set to true so the, uh, if my device is enterprise resetted it can be um, retrieved by the same application but we have to make sure that the same application means it doesn't mean that the package name is the only thing that it will uh, be um, remain the same Nature that uh, signs this application or the APK uh, needs to be the with the signed with the same application. Otherwise, the SSM won't uh, allow you to retrieve those data. Okay. All right. So uh, scope story. Now uh, this is being uh, there from um, Android 10 onwards. Uh, but uh, in Android 10, we had uh, a leeway like uh, you can opt out from the uh, storage. Uh, scope storage means that there is a restriction uh, enforced by Android um, to the external storage uh, locations where, um, previously. Previous um, uh, desert flavors, we were able to, any application was able to. Um, read um, and write data from the storage, um, but in A11, once you targeted your applications to Android 11, um, uh, it enforced the scope storage, and no application can read, uh, write or read data from the scope storage locations. Storage, 
and if apps already using the storage locations which cannot be accessed when the scope storage is enabled before compiling the application to api level 30 uh, or above migrate that it is the data to a location which can be accessed by the application so this is one of the main uh, application developers need to make sure so if you are targeting for the 29 um, you can still um, uh, access these locations and store it somewhere but um, if you are targeting for you might be facing some issues uh, if, if you have not uh, uh, retrieve or back up the data that uh, already being there in the scope storage locations okay all right uh, so if we take the history um, customers are used to deploy uh, configuration files uh, to the device uh, uh, configure zebra applications as well as their own applications uh, so if we take an example like um, enterprise home screen or data which uh, they have their own um, configuration files they can be pushed to uh, a location in the sd card or even the enterprise location enterprise partition whereas um, now if you used to copy it to a storage card and manually import it uh, from uh, for example data which uh, no longer it is allowed in Android 11 so we have to make sure that how we can uh, allow our customers uh, to uh, with minimal effort how we can uh, allow the customers to make use of these um, files so uh, in, uh, these um, uh, enterprise folders enterprise partition folders um, when it becomes world readable or world writable, uh, there is a security concern also. Anybody can uh, push any file that and uh, forces you to like uh, denial of service or uh, attacks can be mistakenly you can copy a wrong file uh, to a location that is world readable or writable. Considering these things, um, we have come up with the, the solution which is and which is efficient as well right so uh, the in the future also uh, uh, change in the access to the enterprise partition as well uh, enterprise partition uh, is deprecated in a11 and access will be restricted by the default in a13 and only uh, specific privileged applications will be allowed to uh, access uh, these uh, locations for example stage now or uh, uh, those will be allowed to uh, copy these files via uh, formerly the uh, uh, mx and with restrictions um, storage locations such as internal or external sd card no longer be accessible by the application uh that is what does scope storage and admins and developers still expect a mechanism to update the zebra apps and their own applications by deploying files and zebra to introduce this new solution where the files can be deployed for a particular application right. okay so if you program right uh, so we have stage now desktop tool and uh, an EMM console which talks to OEM config. So the stage desktop tool, if you take, uh, we used to have the file manager CSP or the file manager configurations. We have extended this feature in order to deploy a file or a file for that matter to a, a targeted application. For example, uh, if application wants to deploy a data wedge configuration file uh, to data wedge, they can configure a stage now profile to deploy this DB file uh, to data wedge. Or for that matter, a custom application um, uh, uses used to 
file which is um, uh, let's say a, a JS uh, which contains its configuration and that particular uh, JSON file can be deployed targeted into that particular customer's application only without copying it to a world writable or world readable folder and it will be kept under SSM's um, uh, authority and the application only the authorized application can retrieve that file. So once the file being deployed SSM will um, the application is running in the background or in the even in the foreground um, SSM will send an email to this target application and target application can retrieve the data uh, or the sorry for the the file uh, from the file uh, URIs provided by uh, SSM uh, intent. So these uh, SSM uses a, a file provider and this file provider will make sure that uh, the calling application or the, the the application that tries to retrieve a file is will be authenticated and then only provides that uh, file access it, it won't allow it and let's say the application is not running by the time the application uh, the file is getting deployed the, when the application gets launched and can query uh, from the uh, uh, SSM do you have any files from me in that case if if SSM sees that the calling application has some files stored uh, within itself then SSM will provide the information in order for the application to uh, retrieve the files. Okay, and uh, say, uh, same pattern, uh, same uh, flow will apl applicable for OEM config as well, um, because the stage now uh, settings and the OEM config only difference is that it uses the managed configuration. Okay, and for um, even applications can share files with SSM and it can be shared with another application. For example, this originating application, uh, it might contain uh, a to be um, shared with this targeted application. Originating application will send and um, send the information related to the SSM. Uh, so related to the file to SSM and SSM will store it in inside um, the SSM persistent or non persistent storage and then the, when the target starts running uh, it can um, queries from SSM and retrieves the file um, uh, which is shared by the application and retrieve the uh, retrieve the file okay um, so that is uh, one more use case that we can go to with SSM. Right. Okay, uh, so custom apps uh, can use the same solution uh, to deploy and persist the files. Um, so if we take a standard sharing files um, in Android, um, the recommendation is to use uh, file providers. So here what we have um, given is each application doesn't have to have their own file providers implemented if you have to uh, share with multiple applications you can share the files with SSM SSM will take care of those files and all other applications can make use of SSM to retrieve those files so that is the concept behind the feature to use this feature administrators must applications to their allowed disk and uh, grant scope so application have to implement a broadcast receiver to receive a file notification and this is if you take the previous slide so th this is the broadcast receiver uh, application needs to implement a broadcast receiver in order to receive the notification once the file is being deployed and then use SSM content provider to query the files and use regular file access Android API's to read the files via content file URIs 
and I'll do a small demonstration with the file deployment as well. And before that, so to start off the things on the demo. So this is the stage now, and this is the file manager uh, profile. Now, what we have is we used to have all these uh, four options, and this is a new one deploy file for an application. So once the file, uh, this option is uh, enable, uh, select the target application file definition need to be provided. So this will include the package name of uh, application and the file that needs to be deployed. Take the help desk here, enter the target application package name and the file name or the file to be uh, retrieved by the target application. So here the, in the table, the first portion uh, before the slash is the package name. And you can have, if you want to maintain a folder structure, you can define that folder structure here. So config is the folder and config.json is the file. So uh, if you want to like config1. Uh, config1 is the folder name, slash, config1.json or something like that. And this uh, target application signature is um, uh, an optional one. I, ha I have not inserted it, but we can, um, it is always recommended to retrieve the, um, uh, set the uh, uh, package signature in order to uh, make the file access secure. And here I have the persist option. And once this file is um, uh, to the uh, SSM uh, targeting for this particular application, um, it will be persistent across enterprise. And once my application, uh, this particular application is reinstalled after enterprise reset, uh, the same file can be accessed um, uh, via SSM. And here I have used the file on a remote server. And this is a built in file which I have stored it here. Right. And this is a pre configured uh, profile. Uh, I am just going through the steps. Right. And now it is done. And when I do it, so we have the new J JavaScript uh, formatted. Uh, Barcodes and what that gets generated. And now I'm going to scan the in stage now. So now my file got uh, inserted or deployed. And this is my application which. Um, which is having uh, the capability to query the files. And if I query the file, I, you will see that this is the content URI for that particular file. And this is the file run.xml. Whether it is a directory or um, not, it will be. This is a file, so dir will be false. And checksum will be the file information. And the the use of checksum is that especially when you when it comes to uh, uh, the notification for a file change uh, application can check whether this is the same file that i am already using or this is a new file so based on that it can um, the application can take necessary um, decisions on the um, to uh, whether to proceed with the file access or whether to discard that um, unwanted file. And um, so the same application, once the application, uh, so I, I will read the file also. Oops. So when I read the file, um, I'll, I am able to uh, read the content as well here. Okay, and once I um, uh, retrieve the file or read the content, um, I am able to 
delete the file also so even though it is the stage now that deploy the file and now it is a file belongs to this person. it has a, um, a control over there and if you uh, if the application doesn't need that file anymore application can delete the file okay so query the files again i don't have anything uh, here right and um, we discussed about uh, this use case as well right so an originating application um, stores a file on behalf of another application right in this uh, the in the same application i am using this uh, uh, but this can be a different uh, application also but in this case i am using the same uh, package name here and a different file so i am uh, i am inserting the file here and once i insert the file if i query the file So this is the sample one.txt. Uh, it is having its own, and it's having a, a content URI. So this is the content URI that we need to uh, read the file from. I'll show the code how it is being done, and uh, read when you are reading the file, right? Uh, so I can delete that file also. So if I query that file, um, I don't see anything. So if you take a look at the source code here. So this is a, a broadcast receiver that uh, the application can implement in, in order to get the file uh, deployment notifications. Uh, this, this is not a mandatory um, option uh, or a uh, thing to uh, implement by the application. But if the application is continuously running, like uh, in the background, if it is uh, a background service is running uh, in the device, and it is important to re retrieve the file as it is getting uh, deployed, this uh, this is the way to do it. So it can be implemented. And once a broadcast receiver is implemented, when there is a file being deployed, uh, SSM will send an intent to the application and uh, the application will contain uh, the intent will contain uh, the information relevant to the file. So uh, this bundle will uh, the intent extras will contain the bundle. Uh, the bundle uh, has uh, the secure file URI, secure file name, uh, whether it is a directory or not, and the checksum and uh, whether the, the persistent storage or non-persistent storage and once uh, once this is uh, uh, this information is received uh, the application can directly use the uh, file uri to access and if we go here so this is a simple um, to uh, code to uh, retrieve the file from uh, content URI, and this is open stream uh, input stream, and we are passing the content, uh, and then uh, we read it through the input stream, and uh, the content will be uh, returned in this function, right? Um, then if we take a look at the insert part okay 
uh, let's go through the query part first. So when the application is starting out and if it needs to check for the um, whether there are configuration files available uh, in the SSM, it, uh, it can use the, the same content provider that we have used uh, in order to um, query the data. But in this case, the, the content URI will be different. Before it was data, and now it is. So what it does is the when SSM gets this um, call um, with the section uh, criteria and all, uh, SSM will um, know that this is for a file um, uh, query and check with whether they are available for this particular application and then it returns back the file so file information is what we have discussed before here and if you have multiple files it will contain multiple uh, items of this uh, secure file uri secure file name secure file uh, whether it is a directory or not crc and secure file persist Uh, so this uh, the selection criteria is important uh, where the target will be the package name and uh, whether the whether the application uh, querying persistent uh, files files can be defined in in this one <coughs> Sorry. and once the selection criteria being defined we just call the query um, interface of the content uh, provider in SSM uh, to retrieve the cursor. So once the cursor being retrieved, uh, this cursor will uh, contain all this information as uh, cursor values. We can iterate through the cursor and retrieve all the uh, file info and uh, it can do anything like if the file information that is um, uh, re received does not have you are looking for you can just ignore it but if you have the file that you wanted to um, uh, we can just access it or we can just copy the uh, files um, from SSM back to the application and just if it is no more required uh, in the, even application can delete all the files uh, as well okay and so that's about it uh, so we have gone through the read file as well and uh, just for the manifest permissions uh, it is the same uh, same thing uh, we added the same uh, uh, two files and uh, we have added the secure storage manager content provider and uh, secure storage manager uh, in this application we have uh, gone through the uh, the files being uh, sh uh, stored in the SSM by the application itself so for that uh, the application needs to implement a file provider here so once the file provider uh, is implemented application will uh, SSM um, for the grant the permission uh, SSM for the files that needs to be shared so similar to what SSM application needs to provide the content URI for the file that application needs to uh, store inside SSM so in for that one so the file path we can uh, get the file URI and then through the content uh, values 
uh, we can set all the information that we wanted to set like whether it is a file we can set it as three uh, this uh, information will be available in the tech talks uh, soon and then uh, the data value uh, uh, can be the target will be the target path and uh, whether the data is required uh, true or false can be uh, set here and once that is done uh, similar to what how we have inserted the uh, data the uh, uh, interface can be called in here so what would happen is um, ssm will re retrieve this insert uh, command and it will uh, also receive the content uri from the source path and the content uri will provide the scalar file and uh, application uh, file can be retrieved by SSM and store it within uh, the SSM itself. So when the file being uh, shared with SSM, this is a very important thing to be considered. The target app package so, is uh, since this file being shared for the same application, we can set the package name as is. But if you want to uh, share it with a different application, we can set uh, the the targeted application package name and its signature in this string. This is a standard um, uh, JSON string, which is contains an array JSON array uh, with the package name and the signature. So that's um, how you can insert the file. Uh, I think uh, we can move to the presentation now. Okay, so we have gone source code and uh, as well. So a, a broadcast receiver, and this is how you can read the file from a content URI that uh, being getting retrieved from SSM. Okay, and this is how we can query the file. Uh, right. So I think that's mainly about uh, it. What I have uh, prepared for. Uh, James, do we have any questions? Uh, yes, we do. We've got quite a few questions here. Uh, thank you very much, first of all, for your presentation, Thurindu. Really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, we've got quite a few questions. So let's try and get through these. So the first one is around data wedge. There's quite a few questions around data wedge config and how that works with SSM. Um, mm -hmm. How how would that work? How does does data wedge support SSM? Is there a different way for configuring data wedge under scope storage restrictions? Okay. Uh, okay. So. Uh, we can we can use the same same approach um i'll go to the stage now and show it and here um it's the same option that we need but what we need to set it here is the data wedge package name so it will be uh, Symbol dot data which and uh, the file which uh, dot db and we can select uh, a file that uh, I hope I have one here. So data which dot db can be uh, se selected. Uh, uh, we can deploy the same file uh, for data which uh, target application signature can be uh, uh, retrieved from the tech docs once we uh, support this feature and uh, we can set it uh, for this website uh, 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 that that information we can uh, will be provided in the tech docs uh, so uh, there was one yeah, probably I will uh, go through this uh, uh, demo also. I'll 
I'll quickly go through this, sorry. So here, uh, this uh, video will contain um, for an application and the file uh, application will be database um, and the database.db and the signature being set and uh, we have selected uh, the do not persist and the file on remote server is so So now once you uh, uh, the file being deployed the new new file uh, uh, which contains two profiles will be uh, listed here so here uh, what we did was uh, in this demonstration we have once the file being uh, deployed we have restored the configuration again same uh, because the the file being uh, deployed in ssm the same same um, uh, it won't return back to uh, revert back to the but the file being there in the ssm and that file will be uh, used by uh, data which as a configuration file Did I answer the question? Yeah, I think that's good. Thank you very much. Okay, so the next question here is, I think I know the answer to this one, so correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I have a question. The SSM data is worked like the local storage, like RoomDB or SQL Lite or, like, or else like Firebase. So I think the question here is, you know, what's uh, SQL, I mean, what is SSM actually built on? And I believe there's an SQL Lite database. Is that correct? Uh, internally, um, SSM stores in um, SQLite database. Uh, yes. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. But that is that is uh, transparent. Uh, it doesn't uh, matter to the end customer. Yeah. It's all abstracted from that layer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I think there's quite a few questions here around velocity and the WL depth files, so the configuration files for velocity. Uh, does that work with SSM or is there a different uh, way of configuring velocity under scope storage restrictions? Is that something you could speak to? It depends on how the, uh, the velocity or any other application uh, uh, access these files, uh, right? So if SSM uh, the files being uh, deployed for velocity uh, or any custom application the those applications need to implement uh, the logic in order to retrieve the file from ssm so they can make use of this but it doesn't mean that um, by deploying just deploying that file uh, will have will automatically get that file for that particular application there will be a some deploy development need to be done in the application in order to retrieve the okay that makes sense yeah so it would depend on velocities implementation okay so um how is ssm going to be used by zebra value added apps like data edge enterprise keyboard I thought that stage now was going to interface with SSM to share config files. Is this not true? So I think we covered that uh, towards the latter half of the presentation. I think that question came in quite early. Uh, so as you could see, the stage now does support the, you know, the interface into SSM via the file manager CSP. Um, is Zebra OEM config using SSM? Uh, yeah, uh, through OEM config also we can um, deploy the files to SSM. It's the same same file manager options will be available in the OEM config also. 
Perfect, thank you. Um, what happens when I upgrade my application and I have to re-sign it? Do I lose access to the data in SSM? So I'm assuming if you sign your application with the same key, then it will have the same signature and it will be able to retain access. If you sign it with a different key, it won't be able to access that data anymore. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, I think it was said that there's a limitation of 10 KB of the file size, which can be stored in SSM. Is there a reason for that limitation? So does that 10 KB, uh, that's just yeah, for the- It's not the, the, the limitation is not about the file size. Uh, when, when you are storing the data, um, the each um, data data uh, element can store up to 10 KB. But if, if you are storing as files, uh, no limitation enforced at, at this moment. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, okay, there was a question here around providing an example of using the stage now file manager CSP to send the file across, but we covered that. So that was good foresight on your part, Rindu, thank you. Um, is there going to be any way to see and manage the files in SSM? Uh, sorry, um, I didn't get that. Uh, can you come again, James? Sure, yeah. Is there going to be any way to see and or manage the files in SSM? So I think what they mean is like a, a, a view to see what's actually stored in SSM, like a, like a management. Uh, no. no, no. Okay, no problem, thank you. Um, so is there any mechanism by which MDM solutions such as SOTI or AirWatch can deploy configuration data for an app via SSM? So I guess they could use the MX framework and use the file manager CSP to deploy the file in the same way that StageNow does, correct? Yeah, correct. Perfect. Um, so in the current demo, the file type was a JSON file. Are other types are, are other file types supported, specifically velocities, WL depth files? Uh, so I think the answer is yes. We saw a dataedge.db file. I would assume that a WL depth file would also be supported, as would any other extension. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Um, so can you publish this use case of StageNow interacting with SSM to the website? So I guess this is referring to having uh, tech docs updated with you know, StageNow and SSM yeah. uh, information. Is that on our agenda? Is that a plan that we have? Tech, tech docs will update eventually, um, um, probably by the May, May LG uh, release. Okay, perfect, thank you. Isn't this solution all dependent on the app developer rewriting their app to use SSM? They could continue just to write files to the SD card Android data, files directory, and would SSM still work? How do staging vendors continue to seed configurations when the software developers do not rewrite their apps to use SSM? Um, so if the applications still have the access to uh, uh, runs on a lower uh, uh, SDK versions, uh, nine or even uh, uh, targeted for lower SDKs, you, pro you will pro uh, be able to access this and the stage now also will be able to uh, download these files um, to enterprise uh, storage and those applications will not have any impact. But what we are recommending is like, more so we don't know what android will brings uh, brings up in the future uh, so but we recommend them uh, the application developers to move to ssm if they are uh, trying to use uh, the files for their application um, because that will be safe for them in the future deserts like a30 Okay, thank you. Um, so we've got three questions here, pretty much the same, I think. So what version of StageNow supports the uh, file manager to SSM functionality? So 5.5, .5 you can uh, take it. Okay, and that's released already, is it? Yeah. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, 
Yeah, so we had a question there again around uh, asking for an example around the data edge database file. So we covered that. Thank you again. Uh, to use SSM, do we need to add any dependency in the Gradle file? No, you don't. Uh, SSM comes pre-installed, so you just need to add the relevant permissions that Thurindu covered in your manifest. Uh, other than that, there's no dependencies required. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, how does data persist after an enterprise reset? So I think the data is actually still stored in the enterprise location. Um, so if you tag the data as persistent, SSM will retain that data or file after an enterprise reset. Yeah, uh, so SSM with its own uh, persistent location um, and that uh, 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 SSM stores the files and uh, files and data and it will be available even after enterprise reset. Okay, perfect. Uh, so following on from the data edge config question, often we will set up one one device and then export the config for mass deployment. If you're using SSM, can you speak to how the config is exported? No, that uh, uh, supported. Uh, basically, uh, once the data edge is uh, configured. Uh, the data which configuration da database file will be available in the uh, device storage and uh, it needs to be manually uh, pulled out uh, and uh, deployed across other devices. Okay. Uh, so will this work on non-Zebra phones? Uh, no, this is just a Zebra solution. Was this presentation recorded? Yes, and it will be posted onto our YouTube Dev Talk playlist. So please keep an eye out for that. Um, can Zebra confirm they are working with Avanti on this for velocity in terms of uh, SSM support for WLDEP files? Do you happen to know if we're working with them already, Thrindu, or shall I take that as an action and follow up after? Um, not at this moment, uh, to my knowledge, uh, James. Okay, no problem, thank you. Uh, when do you need the application key? So application key is required when you um, when you're creating the uh, stage now profile or application tries to uh, uh, share a file with another application. Okay, perfect. Uh, so uh, just to add on that, uh, James, um, mm -hmm. there is a, a signature tool that available in uh, in Zebra uh, support portal. Um, that uh, tool can be used in order to retrieve the APK's uh, signature in Base64 string. Yep, perfect. I've seen and used that as well. Okay. Uh, so, what are the questions we have here? I think we only have time for one more, so I'm going to pick one of these out. Is there going to be a way to clear out the SSM files? Glenn is worried about clearing out old files. Uh, and in addition to that, if you write the same file to SSM, will it overwrite the old file? Yeah, yeah. so there is, there is uh, if you want to add uh, or update the file, um, uh, we can uh, use the update interface to update it. Uh, but if you try to insert the same file, it may fail. So okay. you, you can update the file um, via uh, the update interface. Okay. Insert. And is there a way to clear out old SSM files or would you have to use the delete interface manually? Uh, it's delete interface. Uh, there is no option available for uh, admin, probably something that we can think of in the future. Okay, perfect. Uh, okay, so I think that's pretty much all the time that we have there. We're a minute over. Uh, so thank you all very much for your time. If we didn't get round to your questions, uh, please follow up either on our developer portal or through our developer at zebra.com email address. Uh, again, uh, this will be posted onto our Zebra Dev Talk YouTube playlist, uh, so you can refer back to that uh, as and when required. Um, 
Marcy, thank you all very much for your time. We always appreciate your attendance at these events. We hope they were uh, valuable and useful for you. And Farindu, once again, thank you very much for your hard work here today, both on you know working on the solution and then coming along to, to present it to our community. So thank you all very much. And we'll see you again for the next one in about four weeks time. Thank you.